video, we're gonna go over the different ways colors will react to resin. This one is a seafoam um, crafts paint. It doesn't take a lot to make it an opaque color like this. The more opaque it is, the more likely it is to sink. If you've ever done acrylic pour, it's like, it's the thickest one, if that makes any sense. That doesn't make sense. Doesn't matter though. So, um, crafts paint are gonna be more opaque, which is good. Um, it's just, we don't use that many opaques because we like the stained glass look of inks. This one is an ink by Bombay. You can see the stir stick through it. It's an awesome color, it's aqua. Um, we use these a lot because when they roll over, oh, awesome, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Because when they roll over each other, inks will not mix with each other, but layering like that will give a better dimension and depth to your piece. Now, the first gold that he's using, said oily that's what I mean like it's got that oil slick type look to it it's not an oil paint but it looks oily this one is by Montana Montana it's Montana gold turn not that way this way um, it's more expensive than like a rust-oleum type paint but super worth it show the differences in the different golds so can we are we mi are we mixing gold more than one gold yeah that's okay i'll mix some more resin maybe um, this stuff is gonna start set all right well you can start doing this and i'll mix the other golds and already looks like it's selling up a little bit just mixing it in the resin you can't even tell um, in terms of gold we almost exclusively use spray paint for gold except for the micas that we blow over top of them what is this one I'm gonna mix a little bit more resin. Not much more. You can mix in the amount of paint as you know, you want it nice and opaque or you want it kind of transparent, you put a little bit. You want it nice and opaque, you, you know, you put a little bit more. That's just up to you. I like to start with just clear. So that you get kind of a surface to work with your little uh, border. Uh oh, it's okay. She's dying. I mean, the iPad's dying, not the. Oh. And this is the good. The good thing about resin is you can wipe it with your hands. A lot of people use a trowel or a spatula. That's just another thing to clean off later. And you don't have, the, the, that's the good thing because you can, it self levels. So you don't have to worry about the, the hand prints or chopping it. Chopping it up. That guy's funny though. I like that guy. He chops it up. He loves to chop it up. I do want to try one of those one time. That technique. I just don't want to sacrifice a brush. All right. So what? How do you want to just pour it? Yeah. Like we said before, you can have an idea about how you want to do this, and ideas are amazing. But resin always dictates what it's gonna do. If you've done it one time, then you know. 
Resin definitely has a mind of its own. <laughs> and sometimes it's not a very good mind. Sometimes it does things that we're just like, nope, we'll leave this till tomorrow and then we'll come back and sand it and start over. So he's just um, creating a base for our artwork, putting down a clear or a white before uh, any of your real solid colors will allow it to move more freely. Your first coat of resin will always stick to the base. Like this teal, it's not going anywhere. Let's idea to have a pair of pants or shorts that you can paint in because this is definitely going to get on it and it does not come out of clothes nope at all 
You want to torch and tilt? Time to torch and tilt. Tuesday. Torch and tilt Tuesday. That's not bad. We like to tilt these so that it um, gives a unified motion. Usually. This is pretty sad. The looks of it. There it goes. starts running. This other gold that we use from Rust-Oleum will separate like the, the, the metallic in it and you could see it like little gold flakes. We're gonna use that one. It's amazing. There, now that we have some motion, we're gonna add another paint. So the next gold that we're gonna use is by Rustoleum. It's the metallic gold. My favorite, his favorite, all of our favorite. Looks like this. I went over it in another tutorial. We like to put it through some of our other gold um, just so that it gives a different kind of dimension. Yeah, watch your legs. Watch your legs. You can just pour it on regularly or use a popsicle stick. We like to use popsicle stick just so we can um, focus we where we put it. Control. You can also pour it in one of those Dixie cups because then you can like pinch it and pour it. Torch and tilt. Oops. Torch it, tilt it. All back this way. You can really tell the difference in that gold and this gold. Torch it really uh, heating while you torch it. Torch it while you're we're tilting it. It gives it that really nice fade and run, and the uh, gives it motion. Cohesive motion. A cohesive motion. Look at that. It looks great. Mm -hmm. We didn't put this thing on the bottom. No problem. a couple popsicle sticks to give it lift on one side. This is like... I know, but I just put these under there. Yeah. 
You can let it set for a second, and it'll it'll run like you wouldn't believe it. Here's the teal you said you wanted to add more of the sea foam. break on this one. Let's just use what we have left on these. put anything make sure it's not getting on your floor and the good thing about resin is it does not stick to black plastic at all like it comes up like super easy right now I know but you never know what resin's gonna turn out for you sometimes it ends up looking exactly as horrible as it does in the beginning and other times you end up with a piece that you're pleasantly surprised with so let's see which of that is gonna happen right now green teal That's 
that's how you get waves. What are you doing? interesting little cells right here but that's not that gold that's the teal sign off you guys want to go see what it looks like in Dallas today there's our police station right across the street and our amazing downtown skyline of Dallas, Texas. And the fair off in the distance starts next Friday. Whoop, whoop. guys so this is after letting it set for mm, five minutes maybe five minutes and it's still working it's still gonna settle because it's self-leveling it's gonna sell while it's settling and thinning out we i hope you guys can see like where the gold settles it's almost like how gold really settles like in the ocean like it's obviously okay. heavier than <clears throat> than anything and so it settles to the bottom and the metallic in this paint actually does that. Yeah. So this is a uh, pro tip. What we do is we take a popsicle stick while it's drying um, and just scrape the bottom off. We try to come back and do this every hour or so until it's um, initially set, which is about four hours. This way you don't have as much sanding and work to do after it's already done. Yeah. Make sure you got plastic on the floor. That's pretty. Ew. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. Um, if you have any requests you want us to do, please let me know. I answer every comment that I see. Um, thank you for watching, subscribe, like, give us a thumbs up, share, and um, thank you for watching. Cut. is that last second piece that we did um, it's got some interesting looks to it as well since the ink is lighter than the opaque um, color that we made the white with it lays on top and sells out like that so that is ink the teal is and both kinds of um, gold you can see the difference a little bit the yellower gold is the rustoleum and the tanner gold is the Montana anyways if you have any questions please comment below if there's anything you want to request us to go over further 
please comment below. We're always here to answer your questions. Stay tuned for the next Tuesday tutorial.